I've done a lot of sketchy things in my life. This is up there. <laughs> this is this up, is up there. there. We are back at Nate's, working on the 300ZX, and also the MR2 project has also begun. We'll take a look at that later. But the first thing I want to do today is an oil change on the 300ZX. And although I may have only driven the Z a total of a thousand miles or so, this is still a brand new swap. And for those of you who don't know, this has a KA24 in it. I found this 300ZX last fall as a part out car and I wanted to save it, not only because of the color, I just fell in love with the 90s green color, but I've always wanted a 300ZX build, but I never wanted to work on a VG30 ever again, ever since my brother had one for his very first car. So. I knew for a fact I would swap something into it. So I found this KA in a junkyard from a 240SX. It had around 80,000 miles on it. And then I also found this 300ZX transmission from another 300ZX that was in the yard. We got this thing running and driving and it has been my daily driver for about two weeks now. I've put around 1,000 miles on this entire build so far and I have been loving every second of it. Smiles per gallon are at an all time high, but usually I would change the oil at around 3,000 miles. This is a special case since, you know, so sitting in a junkyard and there's probably some extra goop in the bottom of this engine who knows how it was taken care of so the first few oil changes i'm going to pay extra caution to what's going on with the oil and also change the oil early and with good stuff like oem filters i also have two drain plugs to pick from we have a gretty and a nismo and these are both magnetic i kind of like using magnetic drain plugs because that grabs any type of medical particles that are going on in the oil very similar to how a transmission drain plug is. You know what, since we have a Nismo theme going on with this car, let's match our lug nuts and transmission mount. <laughs> it's kind of like an ongoing joke, I guess, at this point. Once the oil change is done, I want to mount the wiper blades and this cowl, because it looks like it's gonna rain any second. We are all set up down here. I have cardboard on the bottom just to protect any additional oil spill, and then obviously the drain pan. The uh, oil filter is right here, so I can do that on the top. I'm going to get that off first, because I know this is going to make a mess. And I just drove the car here like an hour and a half, so it's all still nice and toasty warm. I'm trying to do this the least messy way possible. Wow, no spillage. Usually it just oozes out. I'll put this in the drain pan for now. Another thing I like to do is I take off the oil cap first, which I forgot to do. And I put this on the hood latch so you cannot close the hood without putting on the cap and putting oil in the engine. You'd be surprised how many people forget to put oil in their engines, especially at an oil change place. We're going to clean up the mounting surface for the new oil filter, make sure there's no gunk on it so it gets a good seal. Take off the drain bolt now. Oh, it doesn't look too, actually it is pretty dark, but you can still see through it. That's a good sign. And there's no metal flakes, it looks like. Also a great sign. While we're letting the oil drain, I'm gonna get the filter ready. So all I like to do is, oh, it comes sealed, that's nice. Got our new oil here, put my finger in it, a little bit of oil, and you put it on this rubber seal here. That ensures that it'll be a nice, even seal and your oil filter won't melt to the block. So it'll come off easier. And we already cleaned up our mounting surface, so this is good to go. It doesn't have to be crazy tight either. You want to be able to get it off the next time too. Now we can take our nice new drain bolt. I have to admit, this thing is so light. Talk about weight reduction drain bolt. <laughs> Clean up our mounting surface really quick. And the oil. Oh wow, look at how magnetic that is. It's really good. This is all wiped up, clean, ready to go. And here's the part number if you want to get one for yourself. Oh, hello, air filter. Oh! This is why I use funnels. I am not good with pouring. I'm going to pour about four quarts in here. The car is pretty level the way it is jacked up right now. So I'm going to start it, check it, and see if we need to put any more in. So far, no leaks. Our funnel holder. All right, let's check it. Wipe it off, retest, and here's our reading. It's full. Well, somehow it still hasn't started raining, so let's slap on the cowl. So and while putting our cowl on here, which is actually warped, probably from sitting in the sun, I noticed the wiper is even plugged in. 
So is there a plug? Oh, actually, look down here. It's supposed to reach all the way down there. How? Now I don't have any of the mounting hardware to really properly mount this, but I did just find out that a bolt will thread into this non-threaded hole. <laughs> So, I mean, dude, yeah, that's, hold, yeah, that's, that's holding it. it. Yeah. I think the longer one goes on the driver's side, right? Yeah. Longer wiper it goes on the driver's side. I didn't bring my nut bin, but I found this one on the ground. You're not going to believe this. It actually is the correct thread. It's supposed to be acorn style, meaning that the top is covered, but this is going to get the job done. And now I'm curious. Let's see if the wipers actually work. Ignition on, wiper. No, still no wipers. Well, that's gonna require further diagnostics. Does anyone know where the wiper box is? Usually there's like a little relay that attaches with the wiper harness. All right, we'll take a break from working on the Z for now. Well, let's shift our focus to the MR2 for a second. This MR2 has been in the background of probably 20 plus videos at this point. We're in the process, or I guess we'll start with what happened to it. My brother got this car with a blown single cam, it's got a manual trans attached to it. We're currently in the process of dropping the subframe, or I guess just taking out the bolts for it because we're gonna have to raise the car to get the engine out. Because I guess when you pull engines on these, you actually pull the chassis, you don't pull the engine. So that'll be a fun learning experience. And then we're putting this, hopefully, in it. The JDM turbo engine, dual cam. Nice. It's ready to drop. Yeah, but I think I gotta actually take this mount off. Oh, completely? Oh my god. There we go. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, perfect timing. Yes. Yeah, it was seriously the best time you could have came out. The engine has been dropped. <laughs> Celebration cookie. <laughs> Honestly, it's hard to say no to yeah, fresh baked truly. cookies. Thanks, Hale. Say no. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> oh, stop it! Don't play with me like that. This is so good. Oh, no. dude, That's perfect. As low as I'm gonna get, I think I can go a little lower. Honestly, you probably could. Then All we can right, release the chain. The, banana. the protection. Let me see. Banana protection. Okay, we're on banana banana. Oh, is banana contract. Maybe a little bit more if you can. Ever so slightly. Yeah. Okay. Ever so slightly. All right. Did it even move? Yeah, it did. Here, wait. No, move, move, no. Move your... Oh, sorry. Is that your gauge? Yeah, that's my gauge. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We've squished a little more banana. Yeah, we are squishing banana now. Here, I'm gonna lift up the hoist You got it! Take it off on one end. <laughs> the hook side. Jeez. It was loose enough. Alright. It's free. Okay, yeah, raise this smudge up. Tighten it. Beautiful. Alright, now we have to raise the car. Right. Boy! <laughs> <laughs> Goes under the hoist. <laughs> Oh yeah. You wanna check the axle? Yeah. Close enough. Yep. Alright, we're going back up. <laughs> we're pulling an MR2 out of an engine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a yeah, you got a good amount of clearance. I wanna here. see how high it's That's <laughs> quite the angle. <laughs> Yo, that's that's getting up there now. Holy shit. Well the car's shifting, be careful. <laughs> okay, you push you should have pulled your skyline up for this. We're testing the limits here. Dude, it's still going? 
I've done a lot of sketchy things in my life. This is up there. <laughs> this is this up is there. Up there. <laughs> Give me a good <laughs> Yo, it's out. It's out. <laughs> yeah, what are you? Alrighty. Everyone take their pictures. <laughs> Jeez. Than me. <laughs> I want to get out of the. I want to do the garage. Yeah. Shot from this. Place. Wild. Dude, you see the sunroof from here. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, come look at this. <laughs> How's the wife for <laughs> Oh my god, man. Dude, oh, have you ever dude. seen a car look that hard down at the ground? We got the MR2 out. <laughs> they don't get too close to it, though. Yeah, <laughs> the core support is on the ground. <laughs> It'd be funny to make it seem like you're just walking. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck are they doing over there? It's at like a 45 degree angle. Someone grab a protractor. <laughs> protractor. <laughs> Crazy, you have to do all this just for an oil change on these cars. <laughs> Very effective, I will say. Yeah, it got the job done. Very sure. effective. Yeah. Skyrocket this thing. Whoa! <laughs> You said it's Jesus. Taking too long, man. You said Jesus, take the hoist. <laughs> All right. Good enough. Good enough. It is finally time to fill up the Z, and I mean finally time. I've been driving this thing on E for the last two days, and that's because I want to learn the needle. You know, because if you know your car, you know how low you can run the gas tank. So this is how low we got it. It's just about past the line and the low fuel light works. So now we'll see our fuel economy for a very first fill up. Now I will admit, I let a lot of different people drive the car and basically everyone that drove it beat on it as hard as they could just, just to see how slow it was, you know? So it's definitely not gonna be the best of ratings, but it'll still give us an idea, you know? This is such a good looking car. I really can't wait to find a body kit to throw on it. I'm currently searching for a Gretti front bumper because those are plastic, I think. Because I'm really not a fan of running fiberglass front bumpers. Fiberglass skirts, all right, fine. Fiberglass wing, okay. Fiberglass lip, okay. Front bumper, no. And I'm also looking for some type of mid-mount wing. Something that goes like around this height. And I don't want the F40 wing. I don't really like how that goes straight up on the back. It kind of throws off the body line, in my opinion at least. And I definitely want to find some skirts. Nothing too crazy. I got plenty of research to do, but I'm open to any suggestions. Sixteen gallons. Surprisingly, that's less than the very first time I filled it up. Because this is an 18.7 gallon tank, I think. Yeah, it was something massive. So it looks like I can keep running the car past that E-line. So the app I use is called Philip. You put in the mileage, cost, and how much fuel you put in. And you have to fill the tank up all the way for the reading to be accurate. And we got 25.7 miles to the gallon. Not bad. I'm actually mildly impressed. 422 miles on the trip. I know I just got done saying I didn't want a fiberglass front bumper, but I may have just come across an ultimate deal. This guy only wants $250 for this super rare front bumper. Let's go check it out. All right, here it is, the bumper that I picked up. This is a Bomex, straight out of the 90s. And it's an original Bomex, which is actually pretty rare. Surprised it lasted this long. But there's only one issue. I'm definitely not gonna be able to fit this bumper into the car. At least I don't really want to try to because I don't want to damage this fiberglass. So basically what that means is I'm going to put the bumper on the car to drive it home, which I'm super excited to do because I really want to see how this thing looks on there. Luckily these bumpers aren't too hard to take off and put on, but I do need to take off the turn signals because that's the only way to get access to this fender bolt. At least it's an easier way to get access to it. 
but I'm also looking at this Bomex bumper here and I might have to swap over this bracket from the original bumper. That way you can mount here because this is part of the bumper mount. Which bumper would you pick? It looks like all of these holes are already drilled, which thankfully they are. Well, that one's missing. I think I will at least use this bracket because if you just do that on fiberglass without a bracket, you just have a nut in there, this will crack. As you can see, it already has started to crack. I don't even know if this bumper has been mounted or not, but just by looking at this, I'd say it was. Hopefully these holes are lined up correctly. Oh man, which way did this piece go on? Is it this way or this way? Oh, I think it was this way. This bumper support bracket was a little more rusty than I wanted to use, so I'm gonna have to find another one. But for the meantime, this will work. We are ready for our first initial test fit. Oh my gosh, it looks a little rice stock height, but when it's painted and lowered, that's gonna be perfect. Definitely have to mount something up here just to hold it for the drive home. If you've ever worked with fiberglass before, you know that sometimes it can be a pain to mount and line up. But for this bumper to have been sitting for 20 plus years, for it to fit like this, that's pretty dang good. There we go. I didn't mount this light because the holes were not drilled on this side, surprisingly. Only one side had them drilled. But just for minimal effort to put this bumper on, it fits really great. This thing is gonna look sick paint matched and lowered. I cannot wait, oh my gosh. I am now looking for Bomex side skirts and I'm pretty sure they make a rear bumper, so rear bumper as well. I used to think it was so ricey, but I don't know, it's just, it flows really good. I like it, I like it. Unless the rice era is finally coming back into style. I don't know, we're gonna make it work though, either way. But now I'm gonna need to try and fit my stock bumper into the car. At least this one flexes without breaking. Or if it does break, it's all right. This thing is nearing full work truck mode. This wasn't supposed to be a work truck, but here we are. Okay, okay. Might have to move that seat up. Wait, it's already in there? All right, guess we're good to go. One more rice rocket on the streets. <laughs> we passed the skate park on the way home, so had to stop by. That was a good sesh. It's always good to get your blood flowing. And if you're ever feeling down, just get some exercise. It literally heals you pumping your blood. Highly recommend it. Whew. Man, I love how this looks. Well, not the mismatched paint, but I can just picture it green and lowered and it's gonna be so cool. All right, to the house. As much as I would love to continue running this brand new Bomex bumper, 
I'm gonna put the green bumper back on it for now because I don't want this car to be a cop magnet if it doesn't have to be. Plus, the original bumper that I have for the car is paint match, so I might as well leave this car one color for as long as possible. It does look so strange in the front being so high off the ground, but I feel like because the car's front rake, meaning the front of the car is higher than the back of the car, it gives it that weird aura. But I'm curious if you guys are able to pick it up from the video that the front is higher. The weight reduction is so vast from the KA that the front end sits higher on the stock suspension. From the factory, the front end is supposed to sit lower than the rear. <laughs> That's just amazing. I love that. Not the look, but the weight reduction. Got our drift stitches here. Luckily, they're still holding up pretty good. No, I can't lie. It definitely looks better one color, but I do miss the project car look. This will have to do for now. But I think we should finish diagnosing the wiper situation. There's a couple main parts to a wiper electronic system. You have the switch, which in this case is a dial. Then you have your wiper motor and your transmission usually connected together. And then sometimes there's a wiper timer and then another wiper box. I did check the timing control unit that is connected. But someone told me that a little gray box should also be included somewhere. And I found this little gray box in this parts bin that came with the car when I got it. And I'm suspecting that this is probably for the wiper system. The 240 has a very similar wiper box, except it's green. It looks just like it though. I don't even know where this goes, but judging by the oxidation on it, I'm gonna assume it goes outside of the cabin. So either the engine bay or the fender well. I'm really suspecting this fender well because there's a whole bunch of relays underneath. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start with jacking it up, taking off the wheel and seeing what's under there. Super monster jam now. Well, well, well. If it isn't an open connector, this actually looks like it should be mounted in the engine bay. But we're gonna leave it in there for now. It cleans up the bay a little bit. Oh crap, where'd I put that box? <laughs> oh, I just had it. Oh, it's on the table. I mean, that's 13. Let's test it out. That should do the trick. Yes! We have wipers. Well, we have wiper. <laughs> That's so satisfying. <laughs> Hyper mode. <laughs> well, let's put that back together. Put that wheel back on. And it's all done. Now I did receive a package in the mail today. Does anyone have any guesses as to what this could be? If you guessed third brake light, you are correct. And look at that. Just like they said, it would be busted brand new in box. <sighs> Apparently it's common that when you receive these, they're busted. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Look at that. It's freaking broken already. This was not cheap. These are like $400. Well, that sucks. Well, I guess I'm gonna, well, I guess I'm gonna have to find a, <laughs> I'm gone. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to find a better way to get a third brake light. Oh, and while I had the bumper off and I was putting everything back together, I very carefully tried to realign the lower radiator support because it was bent from the previous owner jacking it up from there. And now the hood sits much better. But don't forget to drop a like on the video, subscribe to see more, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace, peace, peace. On green, I'm going for it.